Какую вас сюда прислал, вы пидорасина? За стенги. А? Руки. Кто, сука, сюда вас прислал, ты? Наш командир. Какой командир, Антон, сука? Руки Сейчас буду вам командир. Первый бат 39. 39. А сам родом скуда? Я с Хабаровска. Хабаровский, сука. Там мне похуй срочник ты, сука. Я, блядь, вообще нахуй. Короб, Черкасской области. Быстрее, сука, гандон, зувайся, нахуй. Это ее бесрався, нахуй, ебаный в рот, да? Ну, ебать, ну что? Положи его нахуй туда. Проси ему. Не, вот туда. Фу, сука, ебаный сыруны, нахуй. Нахуй вы сюда идете, чтобы потом, сука, обсираться вы, пидорасы ебучие, сука, а? Я вас все буду ебать, гандоны ебаны. А вы чули, как мы вчера нахуй перестреляли ваших трех нахуй там, да? Вроде как. Вроде как нахуй или чу? Че ж ты, сука, не вышел вчера, не сдался, пидор? Я бурят. В Сандерском бою Евгеньевич. 3 ноября 1997 года. Так, получается, призывался в Москву, подписал контракт 15 Октября. Угу. И приехал Шо, а... в Воронеж и там где-то 4-2 дня, короче, обучать прошел и курс приехал. Ну, да, бля, с другом что-то пили, пили, что-то решили хуй, поехать, хуй. пьяный подписал. В самолете пьяный прилетел в Москву, хуй, хуй. похмелился, опять пошел туда, 80-я бригада, первая рота. Я сюда приехал, получается, где-то так, вот там, 27-го, 20 какого-то там, приехал, сейчас нахожусь в плену украинцев. <coughs> Нахожусь меньше месяца, попал, блин. Нас тут обманывают, закидывают на заробку. Не учат, ничего не делают. Дают пару магазинов, четыре магазина и все, идите вперед. In the occupied territories, Ukrainians live in constant fear, and so it will be in the future. This fact must be understood by the Trump team, which wants to secure the right of the Russian Federation to the occupied territories. Journalists from The Economist write that under the new government in Washington, they must be aware of how people live in the occupied territories. One of the representatives of the Ukrainian resistance stated that in the occupied territories, people are afraid of each other and especially of expressing their views out loud. If you don't have a Russian passport, you have no rights. It's like being a refugee, but only in your own land. All key positions are occupied exclusively by Russians. The population with pro-Ukrainian views is afraid of ending up in the basement. It is worth remembering that there is not a single Ukrainian school in the occupied territory and the entire curriculum is Russian. Without a Russian passport, it is impossible not only to send a child to school, but also to receive medical care. Nikolai Petrov, an employee of the German Institute for International and Security Affairs, said that the Kremlin is using repressive methods to curb Ukrainians in the captured territory. At the very beginning of 2022, 6.4 million people lived in the occupied territories of Donbass, but now only 3.5 million remain. Due to an acute shortage of labor, the Kremlin is sending citizens of its own country to the occupied territories. The war between Russia and Ukraine is escalating as newly elected US President Donald Trump promises to end the conflict. According to the Wall Street Journal, Trump has not yet said how exactly he plans to end the war. At the same time, Russian President Vladimir Putin said he is ready for peace talks, but only if his previous demands for the transfer of occupied Ukrainian territory to Russian control are met. It makes sense that both sides are trying to make any progress if there is a chance that peace talks can take place, said Ruslan Pukov, head of the Moscow-based center for analysis of strategies and technologies. While Russia is trying to make progress on the ground, Ukraine's best chance of responding is drone strikes. Moscow has plugged some of the holes in its troop numbers with North Korean soldiers, giving the Kremlin the option of avoiding a broader Russian mobilization, although they are unlikely to have a lasting effect without further reinforcements. Ukraine, however, has even more serious personnel problems, the newspaper notes. In addition, there is a threat that the United States will cut off military aid to Ukraine, which will leave it vulnerable both on the front lines and in the rear, where the air defense munitions provided by the United States are a valuable resource in the face of Russian bombings.
A doctor accused of criticizing Russia's fighting in Ukraine in front of a patient was convicted Tuesday of spreading false information about the Russian military and sentenced to five and a half years in prison, part of an unrelenting Kremlin crackdown on dissent. Dr. Nadezhda Bayanova, 68, was arrested in February after Anastasia Akinshina, the mother of one of her patients, reported the pediatrician to authorities. Akinshina alleged that Bayanova told her and her son that his father, a Russian soldier who was killed in Ukraine, was a legitimate target for Kiev's troops and had blamed Moscow for the conflict. A video of the outraged Akinshina complaining about Bayanova was widely publicized, and Chief of Russia's Investigative Committee Alexander Bastrykin personally demanded a criminal case be brought against the doctor. Bayanova, who was born in western Ukraine, denied the accusation, insisting she never said what she was accused of saying. In a tearful closing statement last week, she had urged the court to acquit her. Her defense argued that the prosecution failed to present evidence that the purported conversation took place, including any recordings of it, and alleged that her accuser fabricated the story out of animosity toward Ukrainians, according to the independent news site Mediazona, which reported all of the hearings in the trial. In her closing statement to the court, Bayanova said it was painful to read the accusations in the indictment and broke down. A doctor, especially a pediatrician, is not capable of wishing harm to a child, his mother, or traumatizing the child's psyche. Only a monster is capable of this and of the words that I allegedly said to them, Mediazona quoted her as saying. Spreading false information about the army has been a criminal offense since March 2022, when Russia adopted a series of laws prohibiting any public expression about the fighting that deviated from the official narrative. Мне хотелось бы, чтобы у людей у всех было бы счастье, чтобы у них были счастливые семьи. Но, к сожалению, как говорят, рая на земле нет, мир не идеален, вот, как-то так получается. Но как бы хотелось, как бы этого хотелось, потому что столько проблем в жизни у людей, столько болезней разных с которыми нужно бороться, нужно искать какие-то новые методы лечения. Меня удивляет не тот результат, который был сегодня получен, а меня удивляет результат, почему все складывается именно так, как складывается. За слова, даже если мы примем, скажем так, на веру тот факт, что обвинение надежды правдивое, все, что там написано, это правда, если мы примем даже этот факт, все равно пять с половиной лет за несколько, за несколько фраз, словосочетаний женщине пожилой, заслуженному человеку в России, да, с такой профессией, я думаю, что это, ну, не хоги ворота, как говорится.